All right, so tonight I get to wear my old man glasses and uh, had a little trouble with my eyes recently readjusting and so it's about time for, for an exam. So uh, once again, uh, that, that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to take a, an exam and look at our lives. So turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I'm going to be talking to you about what's a family for? What's the real purpose of a family? And I hope that you'll get, gain some things out of this that will help you out. I will give you five things at the end. And I, and I want you to write them down. And I want you to put them in the front of your Bible. And then I want you to go back and think about them. Okay? So, Lady Karen, we're glad you're here and, and glad that uh, you're able to keep all the notes going for us. Michaela, we're so glad to have you here. Uh, we're going through a crazy time in our ministry and, and uh, we're uh, downsizing the, the building, but we're not going to downsize the church. We're going to keep it going. And so we encourage everybody to be faithful uh, in your attendance and your giving that we can continue to go forward in the days to come. Uh, so what's a family for? Let's start with Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, out of the King James Version, chapter 6. But we're going to skip down to verse 4. We're going to read from verse 4 down to verse 15. So the Bible records for us, and it talks about the great commandment, and he starts out in verse number 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Now that was the great commandment uh, in, in uh, the day of Deuteronomy here. And so you have to understand that the family was God's idea from the beginning. So he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and all thy might. So now here are the instructions that, that uh, that's going to be laid out, and also the warnings. Instructions and warnings are laid out about that great commandment. Verse 6, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Now I want you to underline that. And that's where most people, as, as mom and dads, we're so busy, we've got so much going on, but we failed. We failed. Even here in America, we have failed. The Bible says, thou shalt teach them, uh, talking about the mom and dad, shall teach them, the children, diligently, to teach them what? The commandments of God. And it says, unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou what? Now, I want you to circle this. Sittest in thine house. When thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. They were set times. In other words, all through the day, you're, you're to have this, this continual flow uh, of, of the word of God into your children. Why? Uh, beside verse 7, right, to build character. To build character. Verse 8, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. And they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. Now, let's stop there. Uh, Lady Karen, what they, a lot of times they would do, the Jews would uh, take a piece of leather and have a little like a little box that would go here in the front between their eyes and they would tie it together so no matter where they looked, it was called a frontlet. And, uh, and so they were constantly reminded that whatever they looked at and thought upon, inside that little box was a piece of the Word of God. And then they would have a bracelet you see them before, a lot of times people call them faith bracelets. And hi, Catherine and Jane, glad to have you. We're in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, talking about what's the family for. And so, but anyway, they you've probably seen those faith uh, wristbands and everything else. and has little trinkets on it. Well, they had similar things like that to remind them of the scriptures. And so, verse 7 says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So this was the father's responsibility to his children. And I'm going to bring the mother into that too. And verse 8 says, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be what? Frontless between thine eyes. 
And thou shalt write them upon the posts of the house and on the gates. And it shall be that when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and, and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. In other words, when you go in, you'll see that God has provided all these blessings, right? Verse 11, And the houses full of all the good things, which thou uh, fillest not, and wells that were digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Now then, he says, I want you to be, I want you to be aware of the blessings. Hi, Victoria, we're glad to have you. Well, I want you to be aware of the blessings of God. So often, my wife and I, when we pray before our meal, we'll often uh, tell God, thank you for the roof over our head, the chairs that we sit in, the table that we have before us, the food that we have. It's not just, you know, a quick little prayer. It's really an appreciation of awareness, okay? And so we recognize those things. And so in verse 12 and 13 is a warning. What is the warning? Well, Michaela says in verse 12, Then beware lest thou what? Forget the Lord. So underline that. So the deal is, don't forget God. He said, And beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Then shalt fear, uh, thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shall swear by his name. And in other words, verse 14, ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. And as he says in verse 15, for our last verse, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. So, once again, this was some really strong warnings. And here we are today uh, in 2021 uh, 20, uh, and 2022 and before long, 2023, 2024. And as long as we have an opportunity on this earth, we're to never forget God. No matter if it's good times, bad times, ups and downs. So the biggest thing here is don't forget God and don't forget how God has blessed you. And don't forget your duties to God. And don't uh, forget to be aware of God. And don't forget to what? To serve God. And so many people today think, well, uh, you know, I don't go to church. I don't, I don't have to do anything. That's not true. Without a building, you are the church and you still have obligations to God. And I see a lot of people, Michaela, that have backed off of their responsibilities. They backed off of the, of the reading of the Word of God when they don't go to church. They backed off on assembling together. They backed off on their obligation. Listen, I'm going to call it like it is, uh, to, to their giving, their tithes and offerings. Many, when they don't go to church, they just forget about everything. And what are you saying? I'm saying that we, he says, don't forget God in everything. So in other words, our obligations. So what's a family for? The family was God's idea. Its purpose, listen, write this down, was to nurture and provide for the whole human creation. To nurture and provide for the whole creation. In the family, there are three things you did not leave home without. And as, as a Christian family, uh, it's supposed to shape those three things. Now, these are important. This will be number one, number two, and number three, so when you left home, there were three things that you did not leave home without. Number one, you did not leave home without a character. A Christian family is to shape and help you mold your character. And looking back in verse six, and these words which I command thee this day shall be of what? In thy heart. And these words shall be in thy heart. It, so often I've preached, I said, this is what my mama would say when I was growing up. This is what my mama would do. And uh, I'll never forget the day that, that um, I was a young man. I was the oldest of three. And Lady Carol, I'll never forget how that one of the things that we didn't do was probably listen too well. And my mama would take us to the store. And, and Michaela, we would always act up. You know, we're just kids. 
But my mom and dad were, were raised old school, and I am too, and, and some of you need to go back to this. But the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. Some of you need to start being parents rather than trying to be a best friend to your kid. They're, they're kids. And, uh, but my mom lined us all up one day, and you probably heard the story, and, and uh, she told all three of us to bend over. My mama got my daddy's old belt out, and she, she gave us a couple of good swicks back there on the back side, and, and we were all crying. We were devastated. Oh, my God, Mama has, of course, my mom was a little about four foot tall, and, you know, gosh, the wind blows and blow her over. But my mom, it was just the fact that Mom gave us a spanking. Now, I'm going to use the word spanking. Some of you need to, I know it's Greek to you, but it's called S-P-A-N-K-I-N-G. You need to write this down, put it on the wall. And sometimes it requires that to bring discipline and to form character. But I'll never forget, she lined us all up and she bent us over. She wore me out first, then my sister, and then my little brother. And we were all crying. We were devastated. And I said, Mama, what was that for? She said, I just want you to know what you're going to get if you act up in the store. Okay? Now, I've never forgotten that. And I've learned there are consequences when you, what? Act up. I'll never forget my mama said, be home by 9 o'clock. She didn't mean 901, 902. In other words, we're to be there right before 9 o'clock starts. And I'll never forget that mama ground us. And, and uh, my, my, you know, back then, that we, didn't, we didn't get grounded for a day. It was for six months. It was for, you know, <laughs> six weeks. I mean, when mama grounded you, you were grounded. And if you broke the grounding, then daddy took over. So my mom and daddy sometimes had a, a double blessing. If we got a spanking from mama and mama told daddy, when daddy got home, guess what we got? The second blessing. All right? So what did it do? It developed character. If we went to somebody's house and Michaela, somebody said, hey, you want to eat with us? We had to stop what we were doing. We didn't have cell phones back then. We have to run back over the house, get permission from our parents. If they said okay, then we'd go back over and say, yes, my mom and dad said it's okay if we eat with you guys. But then if, if we uh, ate everything on our plate, and if we ever asked for seconds without being offered seconds, and my parents found out about it, well, we weren't allowed to go next door and eat anymore, and we got a spanking. Why? They were developing character. Character is who you are when nobody else is around. And so they, uh, so you have to understand that, that we, we had to say yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, no sir, and we had to be home on time, and, and we had to do our homework, and we got home, and we loved to watch cartoons, but unless we did our homework, we didn't get to watch cartoons. We, we were raised pretty strict, but you know, it didn't kill us. In fact, if I look back, if everything, it probably helped us. So, but you did not leave home without a character, all right? Verse 6, and these words shall be in thy heart. So a lot of my preaching today, I tell you this is what my mom said or what my dad said, and this is what I learned as a child. Those are things that were engraved in my heart. Even to this day, uh, it bothers me, uh, Lady Karen, if we go somewhere and, and, we, and you park the car, I always have to get out and open the door. That's part of my character. That's what my dad said. He said, you will always, always respect a woman by opening the car door. And then he said, and, and it was just understood that I should also wait till both your legs are in before I slam the door. All right, just common sense. Okay, so once again, character. The problem I see today is uh, even our kids growing up today, they don't have any godly character. They have no responsibility. I like the video I saw the other day when the girl told her daddy, he said, he said, uh, she said, you know, you need to respect my privacy when you come in my room. He said, oh yeah? He went over and took the hinges off of the door and took the door away. <laughs> and she, now she had no door. Listen, that is not your room. That belongs to your mom and dad. And, uh, that door belonged to your dad. And if you're going to be disrespectful, he did the right thing by getting your attention to let you know, hey, you know what my mom and dad always told me? If you don't like it, there's the door. And you know, you might get all huffed up and everything, but you got to look, you got that front door. 
You don't know where to go, what to do. What are you saying? It's pretty scary, isn't it? But it's their house, what? Their rules. Did you get that? So once again, they were, and as I got older, and one day I found myself in a position as a father, guess what I was doing? I was being just like my father. And just like my mother. I would say the same thing. My house, my rules. You don't like it? There's the door. And I had to hold my ground to that. Why? Because I wanted character in that person, right? So number one, you did not leave home without a character. And then number two, look in verse seven. Verse seven says, and thou shalt teach them what? Don't, don't miss this. Diligently. Most parents today don't even, don't even read the Bible with their kids, let alone teach them the things of the Bible. But you're to do it diligently all through the day. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, whenever in the middle of the day, in the evening, and before you go to bed. Uh, but you listen, the second thing is you did not leave home without a relationships. Number one, you did not leave home without a character. Number two, you did not leave home without relationships. You see, the Christian family is to what? To shape the way that you relate to one another. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. So, what does it mean? It, 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 it diligently means to drive it in. To drive it in. And so, whenever we would go somewhere, over to some friend's house with my mom and dad, uh, we were to be on our best behavior. And back then, the mom and dads would get together, play dominoes or cards, and all the other kids had to go in the other room. Did y'all remember those days? And you better not come and interrupt them either. We'd go in the other room. And, uh, and we had to play and use our imagination. Unless there was blood, don't come in. That's just the way it was. <laughs> Unless you're bleeding, don't interrupt the card game or the domino game. That was their time. And so, but, but you have to understand that there was, we had a relationship. Uh, in, in a sense, you have a relationship with your dad, a relationship with your mom, a relationship with your brothers and sisters and friends. We get that. But you did not leave home without a influential relationship. Why? Because those uh, relationships shaped you, shaped your thoughts, shaped your speech. I remember that uh, you tell the story one time that, that uh, uh, Lady Karen, that, that you used a, a foul cuss word. And your mom went over there and pulled out some what? Palm olive. Palm olive. Dishwashing soap. Stuck it in your mouth. You tasted that for days, you didn't, didn't you? And, uh, and then of course her father, when she told me the story of that, he would look at Lady Candace just scolding her and said, I don't know of any lady that would talk like that. And oh, she would cry and bawl. Why? You know, so the influence of a father is going to be different than the influence of a mother, but they're both influences. Does that make sense? And so, but a Christian family is to shape the way you relate. My dad was a little different. Uh, when my sister and I, uh, or my brother, we all got into, you know, fighting with one another, he always had this policy. And he would line us up, give us a spanking, and then tell us to kiss and make up. Ain't nobody wanting to kiss their sister. Ain't nobody wanting to kiss their brother. But I was the smart one of the bunch. And I understood that if I went ahead and kissed my sister, she wouldn't kiss me back. And so my dad would give her a second blessing. Does that make sense? And so but after a while, I think she caught on and figured that out too. But in other words, we had to learn to get along. We had to get along with each other. And uh, we had to learn how to do that, even during the hard times. So what's a family for? Well, God's, it's his idea. The purpose is to what? To nurture and to provide to the whole family, the whole, all of creation. So number one, you did not leave home without character. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. You did not leave home without a relationship. Deuteronomy 6, verse 7. And then number three, you did not leave home without a concept of God. Would you all agree with that? The Christian family is to shape your what? Your conception of God. Let's go back to verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 
And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all of thy might. Did you get that? So, once again, uh, you did not leave home without a concept of God. Now, you might have ran away. You might have ignored it. You might have gotten out of church. You might have gotten away. Uh, didn't even read your Bible. And maybe later on you had children and you didn't try to teach them diligently. Or maybe you did. But the fact is, you did not leave home without a concept of God. It amazes me how many people uh, found the Lord Jesus Christ as a child or as a teenager. Now, I want you to notice that it, as you get older, we have a tendency to harden our heart. We've had a tendency to allow sin to sear us and to make us leery and, and not trust. But a child, a child would trust you. You can tell a child that's standing on the edge of a table to jump. I'll catch you. And they'll jump. But now I'm 65 years old. And if somebody said, jump, I'll catch you. I'll say, bring me the ladder. I'm going to climb down. Right? I'm, I'm not as, I don't trust as easily as I used to. So I told you there's five things I want you to write down. And this is going to be a short. The main thing is the information, not the length of time. So what's a family for? It's to what? Y'all remember that? It's to do two things. To nurture and what? Provide for the whole human creation. All right? Three things. You did not leave home without a character. Verse 6. You did not leave home without relationships or learning how to, to relate in a relationship. Uh, in verse 7. And you did not leave home without a concept of God. All right? Verse 4. So write these five things down. I want you to watch your thoughts. Now think about that for a moment. Watch your thoughts. Why? Because your thoughts become words. Whatever's up here, before long, comes out here. So number one, watch your thoughts. They become words. Did you get all that? Number two, watch your words because they become actions. Watch your words because they become actions. Let me repeat one and two. Number one, watch your thoughts because they become words. Number two, watch your words because they become actions. Number three, Watch your actions because they become habits. Watch your actions because they become habits. So watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words because they become actions. Watch your actions because they become habits. Number four. Watch your habits because they become your character. They define who you are. Watch your habits because they become character. Then number five, watch your character. It becomes your destiny. Watch your character because it becomes your destiny. So what is character? Character is doing right when no one is looking. I'll never forget one time back when we had pay phones. I don't even remember pay phones. Remember those? And to make a call, you had to put money in. Nickels, dimes, and quarters. Remember that? Make a long distance call. And uh, I'll never forget that I was a young man. I'd just gotten into church. And, and there was a, 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 a an evangelist preaching and everything else. And uh, so one of the ladies that happened to attend the church happened to be what was called an operator back then. And, uh, if you want to make a call, we, uh, everybody shared the same line. You'd pick up the phone and, and you would ask for an operator and the operator would come on and, and, uh, they said, how can I help you? I said, I need to make a long distance call. So this evangelist was preaching about integrity and character and at this revival meeting. And sure enough, after the meeting, everybody went home. It was a great time. Everybody was encouraged. It was great. And so uh, I'll never forget, we all went out to eat and everything else. 
And we didn't have cell phones back then. We didn't have pagers back then. You, we had pay phones. And so the uh, preacher got up. He said, I'm going to have to make a call. And, and he was an evangelist. And so he needed to call his family and check in. So he went to the pay phone. And he put some money into the phone. And uh, the operator came on and said, can I help you? He said, yes, I need to make a call, please. And she said, well, that'd be whatever, like a dollar thirty-five or whatever it was. He put all of his money in. Then all of a sudden, uh, after he made his call and he started to hang up, all of the money came back out. He had a little slot down at the bottom. Remember that? He pulled all the coins out and he turned back around and he called the operator again. And he, and he t told her, he said, ma'am, I just made a, a call and, and I put my money in. And after I hung up, it gave me all my money back. She said, well, sir, that's your lucky day. He said, no, ma'am, you don't understand. I made the call and I, I need to return this money to the phone company. And she insisted that he keep it. He said, ma'am, it's not your money to keep. You just work there. He said, I need to return this money. Will you please? Because the operator had the ability to receive the money or reject the money. And then all of a sudden, he put the money back in. And she said, sir, I attended your preaching tonight. He said, what? She said, yeah. She said, I was on the back row and I listened to you preach about integrity and character. And she said, I, I didn't know if you had it. She said, but you know, t tonight... She said, I want to tell you thank you that you've rebuilt my faith. Faith in preachers, faith in the word of God. And said, you know what? Put the money back in and we'll, we'll go ahead and I'll accept it. And I want to tell you thank you for your honesty, your integrity, and for showing me that you really have godly character. And he put the money back in and then she received it. And he said, thank you. God bless you. She said, God bless you too. And then she said, I'll see you at the next meeting. You understand? People are watching us. So either you've got character, godly character, or you don't. Either you're an honest person or you're not. When somebody comes to me and, and Lady Karen, they'll say, Preacher, would you pray that God would bless my finances? And I tell them, well, I can't do that. And they say, Why? I said, because you're not willing to apply the word of God in the area of finances. And that'd be like taking and asking me to ask God to bless someone who's refusing to line up with the word of God. I said, I would love to pray for you. I'd love to ask God to bless it. But there's no way God's going to bless it if you're going to be a thief. And go back, guys, I encourage you, go back and read the book of Haggai and Malachi. Just, they're short. Just read them together. And see what God has to say about this attitude of giving. When Jesus was with the Pharisees and, and they were talking about their tithes and offerings, Jesus said, these things you ought to have done. But the one thing he went to say is, the one thing that's lacking is love. Real godly love. But he said, this you ought to have done. So I'm just telling you that if you're going to ask God to bless an area of your life, You've got to apply the word of God in that area. If you do this, God will do that. Does that make sense? So don't ask, don't come up and say, hey, preacher, would you ask God to, it'd be like somebody come up and say, hey, listen, I am going to go continue to take and, and I'm going to do cocaine. I'm going to do marijuana. I'm going to do all these drugs. But would you ask God to help me to, to, uh, to understand that I need to, to, when I do these things, that it's wrong, I might want to quit someday, but I'm not ready to quit right now. But preacher, would you pray that God would remove this addiction? That's not going to happen, folks, as long as you're buying it, as long as you're consuming it. Does that make sense? Now I can pray that God would help you to no longer want to do those things. But you can't ask, ask, you can't ask for a blessing if you've already applied a curse. Does that make sense? Go back and read Haggai and Malachi. Get that, get that giving thing right, uh, so that, uh, and be faithful and loyal to God and apply His Word so God can bless. And I'll end with this. I'll never forget the day that Michaela, a guy, he was hurting bad in his business and he said, Preacher, I want to, I want God to bless my business. He said, Would you explain this thing called tithes and offerings? And I did. 
And I said, so here's what you do. The tithe belongs to God. That's not something you pay. It's something you return. You're offering something that's above what God's blessed you with. And it's up to you what you want to do with that offering. There's no conditions of that. But on the tithe, there is. Go back and read Deuteronomy. You'll see that. And so he went back. He thought about it. He prayed about it. He said, okay, pastor, I'm going to, I'm going to start giving my tithes and offerings. And I'm going to do it every week upon the first day of the week, just like the Bible says. He started doing that. Lady Karen, next thing you know, his tithe was about $50 a week. He's making about 500. It's simple. If you make 500 a week, move the decimal to the left, and it's a 50. And so that was his tithe. And, uh, and then he would give an offering. And all of a sudden, God really began to bless his business. Next thing you know, his offerings are now, and his tithe is about $100 a week. And then his business really grew, and it got to where it was doing about three, dollars $400 a week would have been his tithes and offerings. And then he got to making some really good money. And he said, Preacher, can I talk to you? I said, sure. He said, listen, I, I didn't have a problem tithing on $50. I didn't have a problem tithing on 100 But now that I'm making, you know, five to six to $7,000 a week, that's $500, $600 a week. He said, I'm having a little bit of a problem with that. I said, well, 10% is just 10%. And he said, well, would you pray that God would help me with this? I said, sure. We got on our knees at the altar at our church, at College Heights Baptist Church, and I said, are you ready to pray? He said, I'm ready to pray. I said, dear God, our brother's having a problem. Hi, Kay. Our brother's having a problem with following scriptural giving. And so he doesn't have a problem, uh, you know, tithing on $50 a week. He's having a problem with the 5000 to 6000 that he's tithing on. So God, would you just take and destroy his business where he's only making $500 a week? He said, whoa, preacher, wait, wait, stop, stop. That's not what I'm asking for. I said, 10% is 10%. Either you're going to be faithful and obedient to God, or you're not. I said, so how do you want me to pray? Oh, just pray that God increases my business. <laughs> he got the lesson. Why? It's about character. It's no different than getting change out of a phone booth. It's no different than what we found wallets before, scattered down slide road, and we went gathered up all the money and looked in there, and we took it to a guy across town, Knocked on his door, and I told him, I said, we found your wallet, and here's all your money that we could find. And what did he do? He took the wallet, closed the door, didn't say thank you. I could have got mad. But that's what my character was. It's always right to do what? The right thing. Whether anybody appreciates it or not. So I didn't have to have a pat on the back. But I, I my first thought is, next time I'll just keep the money. Now I thought, no. Christian character, right? So what about you? Are you willing to do the right thing? Are you willing to do the right thing when it comes to attending the local flock of God so you can worship together, encourage one another, according to Hebrews 10, 24 and 25? Hey, will you get back to reading your Bible on a daily basis? Will you get back to memorizing scripture, hiding it in your heart? Will you get back into falling in love with loving God with all of your heart? Now go back to our last Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And thou shalt what? Love. Circle that. The Lord thy God, thy God, with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy might. That's character, isn't it? Father, I pray tonight that this little bit of a message tonight might have stirred somebody. It might change their marriage. It might change their business. It might change their ministry. But Father, none of that will change unless you change them. And Lord, they're not going to change unless they want the change. So I pray that you put the Spirit inside of them that says, I want to love God with all of my heart, all of my soul, with all of my might. I want to bring honor and glory to his holy name. I want to apply biblical principles in my life that someone might see it. Lord, that, they, that, that you would bless that. So Father, help us tonight to be faithful over the change that comes back from a phone booth faithful over the things that we find on the side of the street and faithful to do what we need to do in front of our family to show them that God is real in our life. May our children learn from that. May they apply that. If there'll be one here tonight that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. I pray even now that like the thief on the cross, 
that turned to you in the middle of his hour. He's about to die. He said, I'm guilty. I need a Savior. Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. And he was saying, the best I know how, I'm asking you to come into my heart and save me. Here's what he said. Dear Lord Jesus, would you remember me when thou goest into thy kingdom? And Jesus, you turned with what little breath you had left. And you reached out to that soul and said, Today, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Father, may people tonight, right now, do what that thief did. Here's the prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I believe that you're the Savior. That you died for me. Paid my sin debt. And arose on the third day. And that you're alive right now. At the right hand of the Father. And I'm asking you. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me. Once and for all. And forever. Give me a home with you. When I die. Thank you Lord Jesus. For saving me. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that's now coming into my life that will help to guide my thoughts, my heart, and my actions that I become more like Jesus Christ. That I might bring others to the saving knowledge of you. Help me to be a witness in the days that are ahead. In Jesus' name. And all the God's people said, Amen. All right. Love you guys in the Lord.